By the grace of God this morning, I'll be ministering on working in our destiny for enviable achievement. Today, I will be looking at practical steps you must take to work in your destiny for 2019. And this morning, I want to start by saying the first thing you need to do to work in your destiny is to confess your destiny. There is power, so much power in confession. And that was why when Jabez's mother named his son Jabez, Jabez began to leave what the mother called him because there is power in confession. And there are so many people today that are living what they are confessing about their, themselves. Their, the outcome of their business today is as a result of what they are confessing about their business. And so the first thing you need to do to live in your destiny of enviable achievement in 2019 is to confess your destiny. Genesis chapter 17 verse 5. Genesis 17, verse 5. Here God was talking to Abraham, and he said, no longer. Tell your neighbor, no longer. Will you be called Abraham? Your name will be Abraham, for I have made you a father of many nations. Now, God did not come to Abraham after he has given back to Isaac to say this. God said this at the point that Abraham has not given back to the promised child. And God said, no longer will you be called Abraham, but you will be called Abraham because the father of nations have I made you. And so God expects every one of us to answer what he has made us. God expects every one of us to answer what he has made us. God expects every one of us to answer what he has made us. And this year, 2019, the Lord said he has made you an enviable achiever. And so God expects you to answer what he has made you. And the only way to answer what God has made you is for you to begin to confess what God says you are. Tell your neighbor, confess what God says you are. Tell your neighbor like you mean it, confess what God says you are. Because it is your confession that guarantees your possession. There can never be possession without confession. And so if God has confessed, said this year is our year of enviable achievement, let that be your confession as from today. When you wake up in the morning and pray, end your prayer by saying loud enough to yourself that enviable achievement is my destiny. When you are about to sleep in the night and you pray, end your prayer by saying loud to yourself, Lord, enough for the devil to hear that enviable achievement is your destiny. And as you confess it, you will possess it in the mighty name of Jesus. The second thing we need to do is to act the word. Act on God's word. Luke chapter 5, verse 4 to 7. Act on God's word. And when he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and lay down your net for a cash. Verse 5. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will lay down the net. And when they had done this, the Bible says, when they had done this, when they have acted on God's word, they caught a great number of fish, and their net was breaking. And so they signaled to their partners in the other boat, come and help us. And they came and filled both boats, so that they began to sing. The Bible says, when they have done this, when Simon Peter acted on God's word, his miracle was battered. And so if God has spoken his word for us this year, for you to live the, to, to get the fulfillment of that word, you need to heart on the word of God. Peter st started by telling Jesus, we have toiled all night. 
We have done everything humanly possible to catch a fish, but we have caught nothing. I'm a professional in this field. I've done everything I was taught in the school to do, but I've caught nothing. But nevertheless, at your word, your profession can fail. Hard work can fail. But I want to assure you that this year, the word of God will not fail you in the mighty name of Jesus. Simon Peter was tired, but the word works for him. And it's possible you are here this morning, you are already tired about the whole thing. And so it's possible you are telling yourself, nothing is working in this nation. And because of that, you have resigned to faith. You have seen yourself as a failure. Your life has been granted. All you are looking out for now is if you can just travel to even if it is Ghana. You just want to escape. And because you want to escape, your life has been granted. You are not doing anything. I want to let you know this morning that Nigeria may be failing, but the word of God cannot fail. And when you put your trust in the word of God, even in this nation, God will begin to open your eyes to possibility. This year, because the word has God has declared a prophecy over your life, you will stand out in this nation in the name of Jesus. Where others are failing, you will succeed in the mighty name of Jesus. As you go out to begin to act on God's word, in this year, 2019, the name of the Lord will be glorified in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. So act on the word of God. That exam you failed before, it is time to do it again. That company where you dropped your proposal and they rejected you, it is time to reapply. That application you wrote and they said it's not good enough, write another one and send it now. Understand the time that we are in. Have you forgotten what happened to Esther? After Esther fasted for three days, that was the time he decided to go and meet the king. Because he know that there is, great, there is favor in the atmosphere after engaging in long time fast, fasting. After Nehemiah fasted, that was when he met the king. And the king said, Nehemiah, you are not looking happy. What do you want? And the Bible says everything he requested for, the king granted him. Because he has had an encounter with God and there is an aura of favor around him. There is an aura of favor around you in Chapel of Transfiguration. And so step out with that aura. Place it where you have been rejected before. Go there again and you will find the favor of God. Tell your neighbor you will find the favor of God. Tell your neighbor again you will find the favor of God. Number three. Move away from the shallow waters. Luke chapter 5 verse 4. Luke chapter 5, verse 4. And when he has finished speaking, he said to Simon, Go out where it is deeper. Simon said, We have toiled all night. But all night that Simon was toiling, he has always been trying to fish where it was shallow. Jesus said, the miracle is not where it is shallow. He said, now, go out where it is deeper and lay down your nets, not one, not two, and catch some fish. You have been operating in the shallow waters in 2018. It is time to go to where the water is deeper. If you are going to achieve enviable achievements, it can't be with a shallow dream. It cannot be with a shallow vision. You need a deeper dream, a big dream, to do the impossible this year. Jesus said to Peter, now go to where it is deeper. Because it is where it is deeper that people can find enviable achievements. Are you prepared to go deeper this year in whatever you do? Let me give you an instance. Where it is deeper, you get more for little. If I have a very good tailor that is sowing in the shallow waters, and let's say it's charging 4000 
another good tailor operating in the deep waters where you have the big men and the big women is charging 15 or 20 20,000 they are both good they spend the same number of time uh, amount of time to sew the cloth but one is getting times four of what the other one is getting for the other there is nothing bad in sewing clothes for people that will pay cheap for it because in business, even in banking, that is what is called retail business. You do retail, you do corporate. You do retail, you do corporate. You do retail, you do corporate. The corporate people, you get more from them because they are big volume people. But if you have always been operating about retail people, that is the shallow water. It is time to move into the deep water where you get more for little. More for little. More for little. So Jesus said to Simon Peter, now go to where it is deeper. Because where it is deeper is where you can have enviable achievements. But if you are not prepared to go there, you can't get there. You must sit down and ask yourself, what do I need to operate in the deeper waters? What do the people that are in the deeper water need? What are they looking for? What kind of pricing do they want? What type of quality do they want? If you don't prepare your mind to move to the deeper waters, you cannot experience the type of breakthrough we are talking about in 2019. It's not about toiling. Toiling does not mean anything. You can toil and get nothing. But when you begin to operate in the deeper waters, then you begin to have enviable achievements. And so I want to announce to you, COT, it is time to move to the deeper water. Change your dream. Dream big. It does not matter where you are coming from. Your background does not limit you from dreaming. Dreaming is the easiest thing anybody can do in life. You can even dream that it will be bigger than Dangote. Will any policeman arrest you? So when nobody will arrest you for dreaming, free, free and dream. The bigger your dream, the more you can achieve in life. Don't carry shallow dreams into 2019. You cannot put a new wine into a old wine skin. It will burst. God cannot put enviable achievement into shallow dream. And do you know what happened to Peter? Do you know why his neck broke? Because Peter got net that can fish in the shallow water. And so when God said, go to the, go where it is deeper, the net is not strong enough because the net is not made to carry that kind of fishes. And so if you go into this new year with a shallow, shallow dream, what God wants to do can consume you because you are not prepared for it. So expand your horizon. Dream big this year. Because God wants to accomplish great things through you. Tell your neighbor, dream big. Tell your neighbor, dream big. Number four. Create an idea bank. Tell your neighbor, idea bank. Now, an idea bank... It's a place where new ideas are written or stored. It could be your diary. It could be your phone or your notepad. And the reason why you need to create Idea Bank in the year 2019 is because God will drop new ideas into your mind. I want to let us know this morning that Hard work does not make people great. Certificate does not make people great. Or does he? Be great. What certificate does he have? Why is Big Gate rich today? Because of idea. There is no rich man in the world that was rich because he read accounting. There is no go and see the top 100 richest people in the world. Nobody is there because he read software engineering. 
There are so many software engineers working in Silicon Valley, receiving big salary, but they go made the top 100 in the world. Anybody you see in the list of rich people all over the world, they are rich because of ideas. It is ideas that makes a man rich, not salary. Salary cannot enrich you. But when God gives you an idea, it can turn your life around, it can turn your business around. And because the Lord has said, this is our year of enviable achievement, God will begin to drop ideas in your heart that will enable you to do things that are enviable. But if you are not prepared to receive it, God only gives idea to those who are ready. And that's why the Bible says, make room. Do not hold back. If you don't have an idea bank, when God is giving you an idea, you don't even need to know where to put it. Before you know it, you will forget it. And God does not want to waste his idea. So get a diary and write idea bank. Because the idea that will distinguish you, God will drop it in your mind this year. There is a story of a man in the Bible. Genesis 32 verse 10. Genesis 32 verse 10. This was Jacob talking here. He said, I'm not worthy of all the unfailing love and faithfulness you have shown to me, your servant. When I left home and crossed the Jordan River, I own nothing. A lot of us are saying the reason why you are poor is because you don't have capital. How will God make me rich when I don't even have money to start business? How will God make me rich when I ask them to give me money? They are not ready to give me money. Look at Jacob. He said when he was going to labor now, he owned nothing. There was no cowboy in his pocket except a walking stick. If you, your own property is the only one stick you have, there is no man that was as poor as Jacob that I'm talking about in this church. Is there anybody here that all you have in your life is the clothes you are wearing now and a walking stick? Do we have anybody in this assembly like that? Where are they? They didn't come today. Okay. So Jacob said, the only thing I own was a walking stick. And now my household is, is set, and now my household is filled with two large camps. Now Jacob became a wealthy man without capital. How did it happen? When he got to Laban's house, he was working without being paid salary. He got to a level, he came to Laban, he said, when will I be able to provide for my own? He cannot even say, the food he's eating was a borrowed food. He can't put his hand inside a pocket and give his wife money to go to the market. If Laban does not feed him, they will not eat that night. The day Laban is angry with him, the entire family of Jacob will not eat that day. But something happened to this Jacob. In Genesis chapter 31 verse 10. Gen Jacob said, during the breeding season, I had a dream. And I saw that the male goats that were mating were striped, spotted, and sparkled. I don't want to go into the detail because of our time. God gave Jacob a dream. That turned his business around. He was a servant to Laban. But God gave him an idea in the dream. That he implemented in the physical. And Jacob became a wealthy man. He was not rich because he has equity. He was not rich because he has money to do business. He became rich because of ideas. Somebody is saying that oh, they are talking about ideas. When the idea comes, it's not money that we use to implement. It is the idea that we bring the money. Where you have a good idea, money will come. And this year, God will be releasing divine ideas into your heart. So prepare for it. Have an idea bank where you will write it down. And don't just write it. Implement it. And you will see what God will do for you this year in the name of Jesus. Tell your neighbor, implement it. Number five. Watch out for difficult problems 
and have the right attitude towards them. In life, we generally run away from difficult problems. Is that not the truth? And when your boss is distributing work in the office, if you want to get the easy one. You don't want to do the... In fact, when they give you the easy task, you go and thank God. Thank God, though, ah, for the simple one they gave me. But that prayer is a prayer of somebody that is not ready for greatness. It was a difficult problem that transformed the life of Daniel. It was a difficult problem that changed the story of David. Battle that other people were not ready to fight. It was a difficult problem that changed the life of Joseph. Dream that no other person can interpret. Have you forgotten in the Bible? When the queen mother was introducing, telling the king about the credentials of Daniel. After the death of King Nebuchadnezzar and the sun was raining. He said there is a man called Daine. He said he has the ability to solve difficult problems. Those are the kind of people that kings are looking for. If all you can solve is what any other person can do, you can't go far in life. And so when you see difficult problems, don't run away. Because difficult problem is platform to greatness. Difficult problem is platform to greatness. We are we read in the first service. Daniel, the king had a dream. Daniel chapter 2, verse 11. And the other colleagues of Daniel said to the king, What the king asked is too difficult. No one can reveal it to the king except God, and they do not live among humans. They said to the king, this thing you asked for is too difficult, no man can answer it. But when the same news got to Daniel, Daniel went to the king and said, king, give me extra time. I will come and give you the feedback. Daniel does not have immediate answer, but he knows that he has a God that has answer to everything. And so when you are faced with difficult problems, don't say it is not possible. Demand for more time. Go and do research and speak to God. Because it is what others say, it is not possible. That you are able to make possible through God that brings you to lamplight. And so in 2019, don't run away from difficult problems. Those who run away from difficult problems are not prepared for greatness in life. So prepare your mind because they are coming. And their platform God wants to use to lift you up. You don't have to have answer to the problem. It's just for you to recognize that you have a God that has answer to all problems. When you are faced with difficult situations in your office, what do you do? I remember in my days in banking, IT is a very funny place. When there is a problem with one server, over 200 branches will be down. And at times, you don't even know the problem. Talk less of knowing how to solve it. Say, means what you know the problem? We have done it the way we have been doing it, and yet, it's still not working. At that time, what do you do? I will go and meet my boss. I will go and reassure him that there is no problem. Everything will be okay. I will go and pray. And before you know his solution, we call. Many times in the night, they will come here at home that server is not working, you know, and they have to open to customer the next day. Um, in Suru, I was living in Surulere. The office was in VI. At the time, I go, they bring driver to come and bring me in the night. But what do I do? I pray. And solution will come. There is nothing God does not have answer to. Instead of saying no, go to God. Instead of saying no, go to God. Because you never know whether that difficult situation... God is setting up something that will lead to your promotion. So never say no to difficult problems. See every difficult problem as a challenge and as a platform to your greatness in life. Number six. Honor God with your substance.
Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9. Honor the Lord God with your substance and with the first fruit of all your increase. Now, the why the Bible is saying honor God, God is not just saying give God or borrow God or help God with your substance. He's saying honor him because the Bible says, what is it that you have that you have not received? He's the owner of all that you have. And so when you give him in your tithe, in your first fruit, in your offering, you are honoring God. And so if you want God to get involved in what you do, whatever God has blessed you with, give back to him what he has demanded that you should give back to him. There are many things collecting money from people today. But when you give to God, God knows how to secure his people. Now let's look at the next verse of that particular chapter, of that particular verse. He says, so that your barns will be filled with plenty. And that pressing shall burst out with new wine. The time we, we, we relate God's blessing alone to Naira and Kobo. There are generational blessings that comes upon the giver. So if you think, oh, you, you, you work for your money, it's your money. And you can't give to God. You can't give first fruit. You can't give tithe. The first question that should come to mind is that whether you give or not, there will always be people that will give. But you will be the one that is enjoying what those people are doing. How will you feel in the sight of God? How will you feel? And God is not begging you, neither am I. Or am I begging you? Do I look like I'm begging you? Eh? I'm not begging you. The Bible says, honor the law with your substance and with the first fruit of your increase. Do it this year. Be faithful to giving. And see what God will do in your life. Tell your neighbor, be faithful to giving. Tell your neighbor, like your many, be faithful to giving. Number seven. Be passionate about adding value. Be passionate about adding value. Proverbs 12, 27. Proverbs 12, 27. Now the Bible, I want you to pay attention to this scripture. It says, whoever is slothful will not roast his game. But diligent man will get precious wealth. Is there a connection between the two? Diligent man will get a precious wealth. Whoever is slothful will not roast his game. Now what is the meaning of game? Game is like a bush meat. And so the Bible is saying, when a slothful man goes to the bush, and after killing the bush meat, he will, he will boil it or cook it and display it in the shop for people to come and buy. And when people come, they will price their house, oh this thing, 100 naira go pay. And they will pay 100 naira, they will go. But when a diligent man gets his own game, he will not just boil it, he will roast it. Do you know, because he's roasted, the buyer can decide not to eat that meat that day. He can eat it in one week's time. Because the thing is preserved. But whatever you boil, you understand? Remember those days there were no refrigerator. It's not preserved. You have to consume immediately or else it will get spoiled. But when, the way to preserve things in the Old Testament is to roast and so when you presented a roasted meat in your shop, the diligent man put a roasted meat. The same meat, oh, buyer will come and buy his own for 500. The same meat they bought from a lazy man for 100 naira. The reason why, and that's why, can you give me that passage again? That's, okay. That's why he said, who, whoever is lawful will not roast his gate. But the diligent man will get precious wealth. He will get precious wealth because he will roast his own meat. And we get more value for it than what a slothful man is getting. Wait answer to value addition. And diligence is not just about hard work, it's about adding value. Praise God. So glad to be with you today. I believe that that message you just had has been of tremendous blessing to you. 
Somebody is hearing me today that sends a need to give his or her life to Jesus Christ. I want to say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I repent of all my sin. I said that you died for me on the cross of Calvary. I want you to come into my heart and be the Lord and the Savior of my soul. For in Jesus' mighty name, I pray. If you have said that prayer, I congratulate you. You are a born again Christian. And I want to invite you specially for any of our services on Sunday. Our first service is 7.50 a.m. Second service, 9.35 a.m. And our third service by 11.50 a.m. A wonderful time of experiencing God. Join on this Sunday and I will be there to receive you. God bless you and you have a wonderful week.